I was going to start off saying that um, quite often we get corrections on the show. Uh, people like you know Too people quite often yes. But sometimes we get corrections that aren't necessarily correct. And <laughs> <laughs> some corrections are in fact false. <laughs> <Yes>. Sorry. <laughs> so particularly, I think you guys might remember we did the trans brains episode. Uh, gosh, about two months ago. Oh, mm. we did. Yes. yes. And that's expected. We get quite a lot of comments on that. Um, and I think in that vid in that video, um, we mentioned uh sex being less of a binary thing mm -hmm. and more of a bimodal distribution. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like two peaks of where things are um, are most likely to be be the case. Mm -hmm. And then both getting less and less likely towards middle, but still never hitting zero. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we, we mentioned that and some people uh, felt it was very important to correct me on that. And, <laughs> and you felt it was important to correct them back. Yeah, so I felt, I, 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 <laughs> because I, they weren't correct. No, they were not correct. No, 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 no. no I feel I feel I feel like it's quite important to talk about that today. So I'm going to go through why um, sex isn't binary, and also a little bit about um, biological categorizations, if that's if that's cool with you guys. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, uh, I said that sex was uh, was not really a binary thing, and what I mean by that is that sex, uh, as biological sex, as in the actual biology itself, isn't really binary. No, not the way that we categorize sex. No, exactly. Yeah. So the categorizations of sex are undoubtedly, well, I said they're undoubtedly binary. They're not binary, actually, because intersex people Intersex exist. people do exist, yeah. So <laughs> when people are saying that biological sex, um, what people will say is that um, either our categorizations are binary, which isn't really true um, on, the, on, the, on the whole. Generally, it's true if you just ignore intersex people, but then that's like saying, let's just mm. ignore ginger people. And... Uh, Say they don't That's exist. very true. Let's, ju let's just ignore it. No, shush. <laughs> <laughs> you shush. We're just no, ignoring you now. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't make very much sense just to ignore them or say that they don't exist if we're talking about hair colors. Um, and it doesn't make sense to sort of say that intersex people don't exist. So um, no matter what way you cut it, uh, biological sex isn't really um, inherently binary. Mm. Now, people try and say, well, you can categorize it as being binary so long as you ignore intersex people. So let's go into why that's not... So as long as you ignore the <laughs> like if you... all the other things that aren't in the binary. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so, but there, so people say you, you can, you can actually categorize it in the binary, um, based on what people look like, which mm -hmm. is male and female. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like I would say what people look like, which is male and female, which is basically what, which genitals people have, uh, which they look yes. more like. And then obviously that doesn't work for intersex people. So if you try and make one that does include intersex people, you s would say, Oh, uh, well, then um, potentially one where it's the gonads that you've got um, or the the tissues that you've got that are capable of producing uh, mm -hmm. sort of sperm or egg, which one that is. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be, a, in that case, a lot of, most intersex people would then fall into male or female. Um, and this is the thing. You can't say which, you, you can't specifically say um, the the sort of sperm, whether you can produce sperm or eggs. That can't be um, a measure for sex do you know why that is because some people have all the apparatus to produce sperm and don't and some people have all the apparatus to produce eggs and don't yes exactly that's it uh, li literally some people are infertile so you can't say yeah. it's which whichever whether you produce sperm or egg yeah. which is sperm and eggs those are binary that's that's fine you can say that's binary cool mm -hmm. but um do you not have like eggs with tails <laughs> Okay, look, uh, no, do you know I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say it's so unlikely that I'm yeah. going to ignore it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you, you can't say that you can't say that sex is based on what, what, whether you produce sperm or eggs, because some people just don't produce either, despite mm -hmm. having all the apparatus. Um, some people uh, have kind of parts of both apparatus, but um, either don't produce either or produce um, only one. Mm. Um. So if you and and even if you were to say it okay it's based on which whichever um whichever sort of gametes you have the potential ability to produce given the tissue that you've got there are also intersex people that have both sets of tissue both mm. um sort of testicular tissue and ovarian tissue yeah and it, even so no, no matter which way you slice it you can't you can't split sex into two distinct groups based entirely on biology mm. and that's very scary for some people because it is because it shakes everything they think they know. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, and, and it, no, it really does. It really does. But it's actually, I think it's actually more of a failing of the way that science is taught to us rather than um, a failing of science itself. People say yeah. that you're changing science mm. when, in fact, you're not changing science. You're so much as you're deepening your understanding, you're increasing the resolution with which it's, you they, um, oh, that's cut up the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't, were talking about this last don't week. Don't the world. <laughs> no. we were talking about, Corey and I were talking about this last week about how um, in education we are basically taught a series of labels 
um, that we use to cut up the world. So for example, we, and those labels are helpful. So for example, you look at something and you go, that's a chair because of its function that it has relative to you, or that's a table because of its function it has relative to you. There isn't actually a table there. There's a collection of atoms that, that form a function relative to you, table. And then we're taught things in, in school um, like countries or like terminologies which are have have definition relative to each other and we're given a, a view of the world that is basically a, a series of labels and then that's how we make sense of the world is through these series of labels and we're never taught that the labels aren't actually true or or at least if we are taught that 99 percent of the time we're taught labels one percent of the time we're taught that the labels aren't real mm. and that causes us to then find it very difficult when someone tries to redefine the labels or not even maybe redefine, increase the resolution mm. with which, because obviously if you saw the world in a really blurry way, then yes, there's males and females, right? A really blurry, low resolution image of the world would produce that look. And to be fair, sometimes sometimes it is useful to just um, to be able to split into male or female for simplicity's sake, mm -hmm. if you're, and that's why we do it. It's all for the sake of simplicity. I wouldn't, and to be honest, in most cases, I would say mm. it's important to also include intersex people. In fact, I would say almost, in almost all, I, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head where yeah. pretending that intersex people don't exist is going to be more useful than, um, like you know, just including them. But uh, yeah, some in some cases it is it is more beneficial to use a sort of lower resolution view because mm. you don't need all of the detail as an analog uh, shorthand. Yeah. We, we think of in medicine in a lot of cases where um, that, that in a lot of cases in medicine, sorry, where it would be beneficial to see, say, male and female. But having such a strict line of male and female in medicine isn't as helpful as one might think, mm. because obviously um, it would impact uh, it could impact uh, care of trans individuals or intersex individuals and uh, a whole host of other things. What was so interesting when Corey was telling me a story was that one of these conversations he was having um, in the comments at one point you were like, oh, that's difficult for me to refute. And you went and you found examples of things that then that, that then mm. led you to um, a higher resolution understanding of the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So in, yeah, in the comments, someone had said something that I was like, oh, that was, that was a diff that's a difficult one. And I did have to go away and look into it. And that was, someone said, there were only, um, there were only sort of male gametes and female gametes. There's only uh, sperm and egg because yeah. humans, as we've spoken about in our sex episode, mm. have uh, uh, two very different gametes. Two different, uh, very different types of gamete, yeah. um, which isn't the case across um, all life, but it is for us. So th I saw, I heard that, and I was like, "Oh, that that is true. That is binary." So how does my point still stand? Mm. Um, there is only one way for it to still work. I need to make, I need to find out if that is true. Mm -hmm. um, X was true, therefore I could assume that Y was true. Um, I could assume that um, because there are people that can produce both, uh, that have the tissue to, pro uh, to produce sperm and the tissue to produce eggs. Uh, whether or not those tissues are, you know, functional, um, that you can assume that sex is not a distinct binary biologically. Mm. And the thing is that we—it's not just sex that is uh, that we think of as a strict, uh, as strict categories um, that with nothing sort of in between or um, overlapping. Mm -hmm. um, there's also species. Species oh, are things fascinating. Yeah, species are species are things is, that we're taught yeah, in school. Yeah. We were um, talking about last week, and basically throughout all of life that. Those are very strict things. You can't. There is. N there is. <laughs> there is nothing that uh, connects any species. They're distinct. But as soon as you try and think about that, it doesn't really work. So the definition for a species I've got here: it's the largest group of organisms in which any two individuals of the appropriate sex or mating types can produce fertile offspring. Basically, what that means is, if they can have sex and have a kid, that can then have it, a kid itself. Then they're That's then species. species. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have like mules that you you know that are horses and donkeys mm -hmm. having sex to produce mules but those are uh infertile so we know that horses and donkeys different species lions and tigers you can have a liger but that is infertile so yeah. we know that lions and tigers are different species it's very straightforward you know um but then it's not very straightforward at all because what happens in um in the cases of ring species so ring species are uh what you've got basically it's very simple you've got different po populations of different species um, kind of in a ring, but they're not exactly different species because each group that is adjacent, um, each group can uh, sort of mate with the adjacent group. So this group can mate with this group and so on all the way around the ring until you get back to where you started. But um, at the end of the ring and at the start of the ring, those two groups are incompatible. They can't breed. Where do you cut, where do you cut yeah. it? Uh, where does one species become the other? 
because there's two populations that can't breed with each other. But there's no real like hard line you can draw there. But in between those two populations, there are a number of other populations that all can interbreed. Yeah, Yeah, it's like if you imagine that Mm. species one and species three are separate species. Yeah. But species one and species two are the same species, and species two and species three are the same species. Yes. So species one and three are separate species. So there is no like they're a gradient rather than being hard cut. Another another thing that's really interesting to another thing that's really really interesting to look at um, is evolution. Now, when you think of species and evolution, this is this is something that might really like hurt your head. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, come on, hit me. <laughs> okay, okay. When did the dolphin become the dolphin? At what point in its evolutionary history did a dolphin become a dolphin? Well, I guess you could say when we said so. Yeah, to fi- <laughs> that's okay, it. basically when we said so. To find <laughs> when the we answer, said so. To find, the, to find the answer to that question, instead of species changing in the first example, it was species changing slightly throughout an area. Mm. In this case, the area is time. So species is one, basically one species. You know, there's always overlap in the middle. And that's something that we don't think about in biology. That's something that we don't think about with biology um, is that biology isn't very clean. It's very messy and awkward to deal with. And so we've a lot of the time are just like, yeah, yeah, let's put this broad categorization on. We know that it's not exactly how it works. We know that's not exactly, uh, th- that's not a real thing. But if we didn't have the concept of species, it would be very, very difficult to talk about biology at all. the reason they're there is yeah. to be useful. Exactly. It's yeah. in the same way that uh, sort of we split wavelengths, we, 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 we define wavelengths as sort of x-rays or gamma rays or, you know, things like that. We have a distinct or line. Red between- and blue. Yeah, we've got a distinct line between yeah. X-rays and gamma rays, mm. and the, and the red and blue. The cut, the, the we have these ideas between different wavelengths of color, but that's mostly based on just what we can see. There's no, there's no real difference. There's no like sort of fundamental difference between um, those wavelengths, other than the color that we see yeah. them as, really, and also the energy they've got, obviously. But that's the thing. Whenever we talk about bi- biology, or a lot of things in science, it really comes down to putting categorizations that don't exist onto things that do exist. <laughs> If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>